Hello you lovely lot and welcome to a brand new video. My name is Katie and we are going to open up Create With the July Scroller Box. So let's get in there, shall we? Of course, if you're new to Scroller Box, it is a monthly art subscription box. We get a fabulous print and this month's artist is Steph Pardo who was in fact a scroller star from last year and her work is fabulous. I just love her imagination with her work and she's really nice. She was on one of the scroller live streams and lovely person. Of course, we also get a sticker featuring a little part of the featured print. And this month we've also had a bonus postcard, which is so cute. But let's talk about the supplies, shall we? So we have a Viviva watercolour set and my heart nearly jumped out of my mouth when I saw that because I thought, please don't be the metallics because I already own that. And it was actually a watercolour set. So I was, I've was i been quite curious about trying them. So I'm super happy we've got them. We also have a Faber-Castell pit pen in a size M or I think it's a 0 0.7. We have a angle brush in a size 8 which is a scroller box edition as well as some lovely gorgeous as always scroller box own brand watercolour paper but we'll go into all of those bits and pieces once the swatching begins. Of course we have the magazine which I'm going through now and there's some names I recognise on the page so well done guys it's great being featured in there and it's so nice to see your work in there too so you should be super pleased. And of course the scroller top three again some really nice stuff in there I love how they actually publish the stuff in the booklets now it's just it's just really nice. Anyway, um, let's let's talk about the supplies a little bit more shall we whilst I'm swatching them out. So you'll have seen we have a Faber-Castell pit pen. It has India ink in there. It is in a size medium, which is a 7.0, I believe. And I'm pretty pleased as well that it's got a, a good sized nib on there. I tend to find that when we've got something with bold colours, when you put an outline on there, or at least when I put an outline on there, I want it to stand out. So I'm, I'm very pleased with that. The paper we have is the Scrollbox own watercolour paper. It's 190 GSM and it's a cold press knot. I have no idea what the knot means, by the way. I'm just reeling off what it says on the pad. It has a light texture and with it being 190 GSM, it's a little bit thinner than what we're used to, but actually it's still a really nice surface to work on. And of course we have the Viviva watercolour palette. I really find it hard saying Viviva by the way. Viviva, Viviva, Viviva. Oh, it's difficult. Anyway, waffling, let's carry on. So it is a eight colour palette and the colours we have are cinnamon, mango, opera, alizarian, I, I can never say it, but it's a crimson colour, viridian hue, deep blue, violet and a burnt umber. And of course, you can't really apply the watercolours without a paintbrush. Well, at least on this instance. And we have a angled paintbrush, like I mentioned earlier. Very good for creating a variety of different marks on your page. But I'll go through that as the painting happens. The scroll challenge prompt is quest and you'll have seen that I'd already done a little mock-up before actually starting this piece and yes I did actually use those colours. It was in my scroll blanks sketchbook and I just wanted to play about with them a little bit off camera before committing to a final piece. And as well if I'll be really honest with you off channel I've been quite obsessed with lino printing at the moment I am going to be doing a feature on that at some point and hopefully I'm going to have enough of a variety of prints to set up an Etsy store where you can have a little look through and possibly make a purchase if you want but I mean this is all still kind of going on in the background and also as well that is why my hands and my nails specifically have a disgusting colour to them it's because of the ink and no I don't wear gloves while I'm doing these things so never mind but yes I'm waffling so for the prompt quest I I was a little bit stumped with it really I didn't really know where to take it 
I mean, a quest could mean quite a few things, really. You could be on a quest to gain an achievement. Perhaps maybe you're studying something and your quest is to complete what you're studying and have a beautiful certificate or something at the end of it. But I didn't want to go down that route. I also have a personal quest of my own on at the moment, which is to try and tidy up my studio space, which has been going on for about 12 months now. And it's still ongoing. I didn't want to paint that either, because it really would have taken a long time. So I got thinking about video games, because I, I, I am quite partial to a video game. And I was thinking about concept art, and as well the video game I've been playing a lot, although I haven't been playing it that much just lately because of the lino print thing, but I, I'm quite partial to a bit of Zelda, and I quite like a bit of Genshin Impact as well. And I guess one thing that struck me, at least about both of those games, are you usually have a sequence, whether you're entering a new area or you're, you're literally just about to start a quest and it'll pan over a landscape, and I'm like, that's what I want to do. And of course, if you're long-time viewers, you'll know I don't really do landscapes very often. I don't feel like I can at least do a realistic one any justice. So I guess a fantasy one will be fine. I also thought as well with the selection of colours that we were provided, I could play about a bit with this fantasy and, I guess, work on some tonal values but using odd colours to do so. So we have a very, very nicely gradiated background where I used the cinnamon, the mango and a touch of the uh, purpley violet colour that we have. And one thing that struck me about these paints was actually it got a really nice gradient out of it. I do struggle with gradients with watercolours sometimes. I think I get my water to paint ratios a little bit over enthusiastic on the water part. But these blended in really nicely and one thing I did notice about them and I, I think it's a suspicion more than a well it's a suspicion. These are dye based. I'm not sure they're actually ground up pigments or anything and I'm okay with that. I don't mind using them. They're actually quite nice and it's quite a nice change from I guess your traditional style plus it kind of fits in with what Viviva are about because they make the dye based colour sheets so it only makes sense that they've perhaps made a version with some gum arabic in there and whatever they use to bulk it out a little bit I'm, I'm not too sure but I do feel that that helped with the flow of the paint and they were just subtly different from a regular watercolour I guess and quite different from the colour sheets as well I also hasten to add. With the exception of the cinnamon colour they were beautifully transparent which is great for layering. And that's exactly what I was doing as I was sort of building the background into the foreground there. I also found the paintbrush that we had super useful. You know I, I like a nice round paintbrush or a good rigger brush. I don't really paint with flat brushes very often but these are really useful. Now obviously if I was going to do a painting with the intention of using a round brush this would not be my go-to brush and I guess vice versa if I wanted to use something with a flat brush I wouldn't be using a round brush but you kind of get the best of both with this. The more pointier angle of the brush is quite good for getting those little details in there, which you'll see that I managed to do with the background just to create a little bit of depth there. And of course to fill out the larger areas you just put it on its side and away you go and it was pretty good for holding a decent amount of paint as well. I didn't have to keep dipping in all that often, which is great because we're in summer at the moment and although it's not blisteringly hot in the UK, it is still warm enough to make things dry a little bit annoyingly quickly. So of course it, it's good to get that paint down. Even though the paper was quite thin, it actually did take the layers really well. I do advise if you've got some though, just tape it down with some washi tape or some painter's tape just to avoid any unnecessary crinkling. It's still going to crinkle a little bit, but it will flatten out a lot better if you do that. So flicking through the magazine, there was a bit of a cheat sheet and it did mention, obviously there is no black, but you can mix together a Payne's Grey kind of colour, which is actually... I think better than using black and they suggested using the purple, the dark brown and the blue. I just mixed in a little bit of that green in there as well. I just wanted it to, I just wanted to see what would happen to be honest. 
And I love the fact that it just created a much darker tone to go over that purple that I'd initially laid down. And yeah, it wasn't a true black, I wouldn't even say it was a true Payne's grey, but it just added that depth in there that I really needed to uh, introduce. Now for our character on the quest, gazing out, forwards, who knows what adventure they are going on. This is where the angled brush came in super useful. I used the opera pink colour to just add in the highlights and then that violet colour worked great for adding some mid to dark tones in there. And then just for good measure, I mixed in a little bit of the green with the blue and created a dark colour again for a more, well, I suppose for the shadows. I was quite loose with how I applied this. Again, even though we had the uh, ability to add some fine details with that chiseled edge, it still wasn't quite the same as using a rigger brush, but that's fine. That is part of the challenge here. And plus we've got a liner pen to add all of those little details in there, which I will come back to once the page has dried a little bit more. But you know what? It was good enough to suggest those details and I was happy with that. You can tell it adds a bit of depth it's all good and obviously you can see me working in there a little bit more I think I might have introduced that makeshift Payne's grey that I'd mixed up as well again just working in the details once the layers had dried and of course we'd reached that fabulous stage where things had dried and it was time to add the details on and part of me really wanted to add them to the mountains in the background there but I'm actually kind of just glad I left it to the character I don't know why it just sort of gave off those I guess concept art the computer games vibes by just adding the line art around the character and letting the background be so in conclusion this box was rather fabulous I quite enjoyed it again I've been quite curious about these watercolors so it was nice to have a specially curated set of them from Scrollbox. and yes I think next time I go and visit London I'm going to go in the London Graphic Centre and potentially buy some more but that's I don't even know when I'm next going to go to London and I'm not going to buy them online. I like to peruse the shops. I had a lot of fun creating this piece as well and yes I'd already created it before in my sketchbook but I am glad I managed to make a more polished version outside of the sketchbook and yeah I just really enjoyed this box. It was good fun. It was it was good enough to pull me away from the lino printing, put it that way and not much is doing that just lately. All I want to do is lino print. And of course, I completely forgot to mention the candy we had in this month's box was a watermelon bubblegum and it was, it, it was okay. It tasted like the late 90s, early noughties and that's what, well, that's all I can add to that. It was okay. The paints were better. Not to eat though. You know what I mean. Anyway, waffling aside, I do hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope it's helped if you've had this box and you're looking at it wondering, oh, what am I supposed to do with it? Just play about, they behave a little bit more flowy than regular watercolours and they're just good fun to play with. It was a really good box. Now of course I would like to say thank you so very much for watching. Again, I do hope you have enjoyed it. There should be some more videos on screen now that I definitely think you should click on and I definitely think you'll enjoy it if you've enjoyed this one. In the meantime, I'll see you lovely lot soon. Bye!